afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome to Pin All Quilting. My name is Liz Holpin and we're here in our handy quilter showroom near Pershaw in Worcestershire in the UK. I'm here with Pete, my husband, and uh, we'll be doing a Facebook Live with you today featuring some of the many things that are happening at Pinhole Quilting. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, we hope you find it interesting, maybe learn a few things and if you're thinking about a long arm we've got some really good experiences for you to come on, for you to be able to try one out. So, um, what a week. Pete, we've had another, we actually we've been mostly here this week. We won't be here, I won't be here very much on and off for the next three weeks because we've got lots and lots of things. We're traveling around the country. We're doing servicing here, there, and everywhere. Um, I think we're covering everywhere from deepest, deepest Kent. I was about to say deepest, darkest, but I don't think it is deepest, darkest. Um, yeah, Margate, Ramsgate, seeing some very long-standing customers, which will be lovely. And then um, I'll be going over the east side of the uh, UK, uh, seeing some customers over there. So, um, uh, but also up to the north, um, to see our lovely handy quilter ambassador, Stuart Hillard, who uses his Amara with Pro Stitcher with great results, which you can often see on Sewing Street. So, um, in fact, Sewing Street, I was reading some posts on Facebook this week from some people who were posting on Facebook about Sewing Street and how much it had really helped them, you know, when people perhaps sadly lose their um, spouse, it can be a real lifesaver. And honestly, some of the stories on there, it was really moving because, you know, having that connection to something, and I think it's true of a lot of our quilting groups that they are like a really good anchor for people when the rest of their life has been thrown up in the air. And um, it's a really, really amazing thing. In the same way that, you know, during COVID, we had so many Facebook groups. We were doing Facebook pretty much. I think we were doing Facebook every day, weren't we, at one point? We were doing it quite regularly because regularly. we couldn't have visitors, of course. We didn't have anybody coming. So in, yeah, January 2021 was when we first started doing these sessions and connecting with people. But yeah, so it was interesting reading those uh, Facebook posts about how important it was to people. So well done to, um, you know, all those groups out there that keep people together. Um, we used to have a group up in Birmingham that was for people that were, a lot of them had um, like difficulty getting out of the house even. And this lovely lady, she ran this fantastic group. And she said, every single person has got a story, you know, and they just come along and it's just, doing the quilting, doing the stitching. You don't have to talk about all your problems back home. You can leave them back home. And um, that's the great thing about these groups. So I'm, I'm very thankful that we've got a lot of groups. We have a lovely group here that I'm an intermittent member of, um, not having a lot of time at the moment. Because guess what? January 2024, how busy has it been, Pete? It's been our busiest ever month. It's been our busiest ever month. Get that. That is not what we expected. We are very grateful to all of those customers who've placed orders with us. And we really look forward to seeing you February, April, some of the other classes we've got coming up in the year. And we're planning more things. If we, we just, once we get some breathing space, we'll be doing those things. But um, yeah, it's been so busy. So part of the reason for that is of course the new Moxie XL. So I see the first people online today are Helen and Jeff. Helen and Jeff. Helen. What an excited, what an excited, lovely customer Helen is. And um, yeah, we, we, yeah, it's amazing. Already, <laughs> Helen is making steps in like this kind of trajectory of her long arm learning curve, um, stitching out with the Pro Stitcher Lite on the Moxie XL within a day of just getting the whole setup. So well done, Helen and Jeff. Brilliant to have you online. And um, welcome to the Handy Quilter family, for sure. So, so you're, you've been following us for quite a while now, Helen, and then we met you and Jeff at Festival of Quilts last year and having talked through all the machines, in the end, you decided the Moxie XL was the machine for you. Yeah, and it was great timing as well, because the XL, we just got it coming in and we had that great intro offer. 
So talking about introductory offers, uh, introductory offer ends on the 31st of January, which is imminent. I know it's imminent because it's Wednesday next week and it's when I'm heading up to see Stuart. So uh, if you are interested in a mock CXL, we've got a great intro offer. Um, in fact, we've actually sold out of our initial batch, haven't we, Pete? Uh, we but, have. So yes. we will have to get more. So the, the offer still applies, deposit yeah. paid by the 31st of January, but there may be a delay in getting your mock CXL there because yeah. we have now sold out of the initial batch. Yeah, we had 10 pallets come in and the, the, honestly, the, the warehouse was chocker. Chock a chock a block to the point it was a bit like one of those puzzles. Mark was moving around the pallet trucks like one of those puzzles where you've got one square free and you have to move it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's not like that now. It's not like that now. Lots of machines have gone out the door. So uh, they've been arriving on people's doorsteps, literally pallets of Moxie product, Amara product, and everything else. So yeah, congratulations to everybody who's placed an order. If you'd like to place an order for the Moxie XL, just give us a call, send us an email, and we can talk you through what, um, what the machine can do and uh, fix it up. Fix it up. We can do that. So anything else, Pete? Do you want to just intro some other people? Yes, let's say hello to the others online. So Karen Vipond in Anglesey. Yes, hello, Karen. Karen is so quick. She's beaten. She's like the Val Brooks of 2023, I think. Oh, she was second to Helen and Jeff today. But, oh, uh, second to Helen and Jeff. So, Karen, I've been speaking to another, game. another customer in Anglesey this morning who's decided to upgrade yes. her machine. So I shall be on my way to sunny Anglesey, Absolutely. hopefully, at the end of February. Yeah. To install her machine. At the end of February? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Oh, this is, so, this is so, so hot off the press. Didn't even know that. Congratulations um, to the upgrade customer. And there's Julia up in Northumberland. Yes. Oh, hi, Julia. Joyce in Southport, sunny yes. Southport. It seems to be sunny all over the country today, which is It's a beautiful nice. day out there. And we haven't really been out, have we, though? We haven't, no. Janice <laughs> Collins. Can't get to work. In West Sussex. Hello, Janice in West Sussex. And Joe Lovely Pike. Lovely West Sussex. I've just booked a weekend down in West Sussex. And Joe Pike. Joe Pike. And Ellen on the Wirral. Hello. Hello to Ellen. Ellen is doing great stuff. Ellen asked me some of the best pro-stitcher questions, pushes me to my um, technical limits sometimes because <laughs> you ask some great questions. Ellen's really using the software, which is brilliant. And uh, Elizabeth Dunkley. Hi, Elizabeth. Making millions oh. of flying geese. Millions of flying geese. <laughs> oh, and how are you going to quilt them? I, I think you're probably you exaggerating a little bit there. Liz, There's a little bit of artistic sure, license, possibly. We're I'm, allowed to do that when we're making millions of them. I'm sure it feels, feels like, like it. Feels like it. I was doing some. I was doing some piecing last night, wasn't I, Pete? Doesn't happen often, but I'm making a quilt for a lovely, lovely friend who's got Emmy, and I thought, oh, it's her birthday coming up, big birthday, like me, and um, yeah, this this poor lovely friend of mine is um, unfortunately not getting out of bed because she's got such bad Emmy. So I thought, quilt, that's what she needs. She needs a quilt. So I've been making a quilt. And I've forgotten how long piecing takes because I do, I do so much quilting because I've got so many quilt tops from the past, but I'm making a lovely new quilt. Um, and I, I'm hoping to finish it in time for her birthday in February. But um, yeah, I, I'm, on, I'm, I'm, on good, I'm on good track for, uh, to, for doing that. We've also got Mary McPhillips up in sunny Scotland, even oh, sunny up in Scotland. I'm pleased to hear Mary, that. Mary, what a lovely lady. Yep, I'm sure Mark would say hello if he could. <laughs> he's not, he's next door. He's working in the warehouse. And Karen in Anglesey says that she's just been watching yeah. Joe Avery unboxing her new Moxie XL on the Instagram Live. Oh, awesome. We, we didn't know, did we? We're going to have to watch. Well, we know that she's got it, but yeah, we'll yes. have to watch it. She said she was going to do it. That's great. Oh, exciting. Well done, Joe. Well done, Joe. We'll have to, we'll have to share that later. Um, seriously, if Joe Avery is not somebody you follow on social media, then yeah. she really is somebody you should follow. She's very inspirational and really? uh, enthusiastic. And so Joe, yeah, and Joe's going to be doing, yeah, she's doing some things at Festival of Quilts this year um, that you are definitely worth having a look at. That'll be in the lecture theatre. And um, also, Jo is coming here, isn't she? She's coming here in September to do 
an open day. She is. So that's pretty exciting. So we will let you know when the details of that are available. And you, you know, if you're interested in coming along to hear Jo talk about her long arm and, and also, I mean, she's very good on color, which is amazing. We'll, we'll hone out the details of what she's going to talk about later. Okay. So find a few people here. Yeah. Chris, Who have we got? Christine in Cumbria. Christine, Christine, oh, Christine's done amazing things. And in fact, um, I was talking to the lady who bought your machine, Christine, um, and she just got some questions because she keeps her machine in the outside shed. She shed, of course, I'm sure it's beautiful. Um, and uh, she was asking about temperatures, temperatures for running. Now, last week was particularly cold and anybody who has such a she shed, rather than it being in their home, um, you just have to be a little bit careful to get your machine up to a temperature that it's actually going to be happy running at. So we look, we, I looked at it with, um, I've forgotten the name of the lady, but um, we looked at it together and it's on our Facebook page. If you just search for temperature, you'll find it comes up on our pinhole quilting page on Facebook. It comes up with Joe Avery's temperature quilt and also the temperature operating um, guides for uh, handy quilter machines. So over two degrees is, re is required. Um, but actually over 12 degrees C is preferred. We might even get to those top temperatures that they got on there, which was 29 C. Yeah, uh, so this memory. is centigrade for our British and European customers. Oh yeah, customers. sorry, not Fahrenheit. Yes. I can't do the translation anymore. So I remember. also hello to Carol uh, Watson up in Durham. Hello, Carol. Now that's exciting, isn't it? Because Carol's also doing the upgrade, which is, um, we should yeah. do, Carol, you should do an unboxing. Wendy in Bristol. Wendy, one, oh, of, one right. of our local Bristol customers was telling me a week ago that you've got these funny things called bus gates in Bristol. I won't yes. say any more about those at the moment, but they, they sound very strange. They sound like they're there to trap the unwary. And uh, finally, Margaret <laughs> yeah. Greta. Greta. Greta says, and this is a nice lead in, I think, Liz. Okay. Just painting birds on my latest landscape. Oh, Carolyn, what have you started? Oh, amazing. So, opportunity to talk about classes. Yes. And in fact, Greta's already said she's, she's expressed an interest in doing the one that will be in July with Carolyn. Um, haven't got the details up yet because I know that we'll have a lot of people subscribing to it. I need to do it as like a, we're going to announce it available at such and such a date and then you can book on from that date rather than me just posting it. So I will let you know when that is. We've got the dates with Carolyn. It'll be a painting day and the landscape workshop day that was so successful last year that everybody absolutely loved. It was amazing in here. There was like, there was fabric from all kinds of sources floating around um, the showroom and um, the sound of machines happily humming, which was incredible. We had 14 people on that day, 14 or 15, I can't remember how many. A couple of domestic customers came as well, they were local customers, and um, that was lovely. That was really lovely. Sit downs, full blast, absolutely pedal to the metal, everybody was having a fun time. Couching, putting down different fabrics, and now Greta's painting, painting the birds. Excellent. So we've got that workshop coming up, but you can't book it yet. Um, but the other workshops we've got, we've got rulers and fills coming up in February and there's places available for that. Now, let me tell you about the rulers and fills. In February and in April, we will be using some lovely fabric. I say lovely fabric because I think it's lovely. This is for the rulers and fills course. So this is a fabric that, that I've created with the assistance of Carolyn and Helen, with their input for sure, particularly the other one, which Helen pretty much specked out. But this one was, um, Carolyn and I developed this. I think it's brilliant, I think it's great. So did this um, and got it printed on fabric. So you'll be able to work your way through this design for the rulers and the fills. So rather than having just a blank uh, piece of fabric that you then do all your ruler work on, you've got your guidelines and we'll be doing border treatments, we'll be doing all kinds of fills, down the flying geese, etc. And um, you know, these circular things for, for feather work as well, if you want to do some feathers. So it'll be a very useful piece of fabric for us to work on. And that is for the rulers and fills. So there's two sets of those classes. As I say, there's one in February, still space is available on that. So if you're on the foundation workshop and you have the opportunity to add a day onto it, 
I would definitely do that because this fabric is going to really help you. You're going to be able to practice on it. We've got the border thing so we can show you how we do that. I'm going to have some workbooks as well printed up with these designs on it so you can practice it on paper and then you can come to the machine and you can stitch it out because we all know, I think we all know, we've said it quite a lot, but if you don't know this, I will share you this information with you. But if you draw it first and you practice your drawing skills, you will improve your stitching skills. There we go. Ni say no more. The so other one. That rulers and fills course is on Wednesday, the 21st of February yes. here at our showroom. Yeah. And it's also in April on the. Mr. Wasn't Holpin. Set up for that question. Mr. Holpin will have a look. <laughs> Alternatively, the Alternatively. Rulers and Fills course is on Thursday the 25th of April, which follows the foundation workshop the previous day. Okay, and the feathers is on the 26th. And the feathers it? class is the day after that. So yes. for those of you with new machines who haven't done your foundation workshop, you could do three days of classes there. But for anybody else who has a machine, there's still the possibility of doing two days of classes. Yeah, so if you've done the foundation, you could do your Rulers one, which is that one. And then here's the feathers one. So take a look at this one. This one, um, I've made a few little changes. This is like my sample. Um, so I'll be practicing on this. It's a few tiny tweaks I'm doing, but basically this is for practicing your feathers backwards and forwards, up and down, border treatment, on a curve and in a triangle in shapes and things. So that's, this will be the base for your feathers workshop. Um, and we might even use some of the other ones, but we'll see. We'll see how much we get done in that day. I'm going to be practicing on this. So the great thing about having these is, the, and the, one of the reasons why I've done this sort of variegated um, color, is it's really interesting to see the effect of different thread colors as you progress from light to dark. What do you like? What do you not like? What doesn't look good? What does look good? So we'll be changing thread colors so that you can also practice that. Practice changing the thread in your machine, getting the tension right. So this is a, a kind of a very full day um, in terms of practicing. Um, so yeah, we're going to have fun with this. Yeah, so um, that will be the rulers uh, and fills and the feathers workshop. Rulers and Fills is with uh, Carolyn James and Carolyn is a handy quilter owner um, who's got into doing the education with us and we love having her over here to do the foundation workshop and she's doing the Rulers and Fills with us as well. She ran the landscape class last year and Carolyn comes with loads of ideas, bags of energy and she teaches over actually in um, patchwork and quilting techniques on domestic machines over um, in Suffolk but actually you know, she's been using her long arm for a long time, quilting for others, and comes with a, a whole load of experience that she can pass on to you. So really worthwhile coming on that Rulers and Fills class if you can make it. We hope you can. We look forward to seeing you at our showroom. Okay, um, what's next? Oh, that's the other thing. So this is our workbook book that we give you when you come on our foundation workshop. So this is something that you get. It's part of the uh, experience of coming, uh, of getting a handy quilter is to get one of these workshop, um, these free workshops. And this, this book is gonna be a very useful reference for you because it's got things like charts of what thread requires what needle and how many holes to put it through on the pretensioner. And the one that we're gonna discuss today is settings for quilting. So settings for quilting is something that we quite frequently get asked about, particularly by those people who perhaps haven't been able to attend the foundation workshop and they want to know more. Um, and some of those guidelines have changed over time, but the foundation workshop will give you such a good grounding, usually two to three months after you've had the machine is a good time to take it, maybe up to six months. Okay, Pete, any questions so far or any feedback? Yeah, or? I think it's worth saying actually just about that book um, mm -hmm. that that foundation class is something that Liz has been developing for the last 12 years or so. Yeah, I mean, it's true. a very highly developed course, that foundation course um, that is perfect for new owners. So, you know, it takes a long time to put those things together. And that's the combination of um, many years of experience. So uh, yeah. <coughs> who else we've got? Um, 
Barbara Thomas up in Mould, who's one of our, another of our new customers, yes. sounds like she's in the process of putting, putting her um, machine together. <coughs> and Barbara, frame together. have you checked your emails? For some reason, my original email today, <coughs> you didn't go out, so I've resent it today. I hope you've got it. It's got all the links on there, which will help you assemble your frame. So she says she's doing battle with some very sticky Velcro at the moment. <laughs> If you've got any questions, you know where we are. <laughs> and okay. uh, Greta says that she's managed to get that fabulous Grids book that you mentioned last oh, week. Oh, the Cindy book. Congratulations, yes. and, that's great. Uh, she's going straight to it as soon as the birds have flown that she, she, she's working on. <laughs> Enjoy your painting, Greta. We look forward to seeing you. I'm, I'm hoping you're coming in the July workshop. And okay. uh, yeah, Elizabeth Dunkley, only 198 flying geese, really. That's, you're prone to exaggeration there. Ooh, that's a, that's a lot. Millions. Still that's lot. millions in my book. Without a doubt, that's millions. Right, well, I'm not going to stitch on this right now because I need to plan my quilting and uh, have, a, have a go at uh, putting our designs together that we'll be teaching. So what we're going to do on the practical session today is... <clears throat> Let me just check this tension. I need to go and get a I drink. Can I get yeah, you anything? Actually, could you? Yeah. Um, can I have a cup of tea, please? Is that too much? Cup of tea. Cup of tea. I'm on the green tea at the moment. I'm having a green tea thing. But I, I'll, what are you making? Are you going to have a break? Are you having a cup of tea? No. OK. Right, so. Um, we have got the latest, the very latest, lovely Moxie XL, as featured in Helen and Jeff's home at the moment, soon to be the built cloth house. So the Moxie XL, it's the latest long arm from Handy Quilter. As I say, we saw it at Houston and in fact did um, a little video with Adam, Adam Rateliff, Adam So Fun, who is just a delight. Um, he really is fun and we, was, we spent ages trying to, <laughs> trying to get him so that we could do like a video. Finally, on the final day, we managed to, um, he, they were so busy at Handy Quilter, we finally managed to, to pin him down. And we did a video of him using the Excel. So if you look back to the, I'm going to say November, November YouTubes, you'll see Adam So Fun um, on our YouTube channel. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, I definitely recommend that you do. So this is the Handy Quilter uh, Moxie XL, 18 inch throat space, changes from the Moxie R, increased lighting, faster machine, 12, 2100 instead of 1800 stitches per minute. It's a touch screen interface rather than a screen that you use to control it via the handlebars. And I'm gonna go through with you some of the settings and when you would use those settings. So in our book, our foundation workshop book, we go through these. So let's just start with Regular quilting. Now, an innovation that they put in for the Moxie was that if you don't move your machine and you've pressed start, but you haven't actually done any quilting, it'll shut itself off. So it's actually quite useful to be in the cruise or continuous stitching um, because it will actually stop you from getting bird's nests. So there are three choices of stitching mode. M, P, and C. M is for manual. So we would set how many stitches per minute in manual. P is for precision, and we'll go through that in a moment. It doesn't move until, it doesn't start stitching until you move it, until you move the handlebars, move the machine. C is for the Americans. You say cruise. I, I tend to say continuous because it continuously stitches at a certain rate, even when you pause. And it sort of seems to make a lot more sense for our UK customers than the word cruise. So, uh, there's so many things lost in translation, aren't there? <laughs> Sometimes things, there was, one, there was one word on the latest Handy Quilter brochure, I won't tell you what it is, but there was one word which the translation to the UK in English, um, not American English, with such that I have taken it out of all the literature. Okay, just saying. Now, cruise, continuous mode. We set how many stitches per inch we want and what the speed will be 
when it continuously stitches, when we pause, when we like, that's like a momentary pause. Easiest thing is to show you. Oh, Pete's got my tea, thank you. So I've got this set to a setting that we recommend you start with, which is 11 stitches per inch and 150 stitches per minute for the cruise speed or the continuous speed. So I'm gonna pick up my thread and to do that, I do needle down, needle up, and then just pull on the bobbin thread, make sure it's running smoothly. Then I do a couple of stitches just to lock it down, either back on itself or for forward in a small line, in, a, in small increments, like micro stitches. And then when I press the start button, which is on this right hand handlebar, it'll start stitching like this. That's at 150. So when I pause, it still keeps stitching, which is great because it feels like it's flowing more that way. So this is for typical quilting. There will be a nice point at which you as a user feel most comfortable. Now that might be 150, it might be 200, it might be 250. When Talen Jeffrey came over to do some teaching with us in 2022, is it really 2022? Gosh, I think it is, isn't it? Did Talen come over? It wasn't last year, was it? Wow. Yeah, Pete's going, why are you asking My me? computer's just shut itself down, that's why. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Pete's computer just shut, shut down. Luckily, we're not running off the computer. So um, when Talen came over, she was stitch, she stitches with 250 stitches per minute. Um, and it'd be, hey, it'd be really interesting if in the comments you post what your typical, that'd be really useful, wouldn't it? It's like a, a just mm. a sort of, just a it general... Would. Yeah, input, for, and particularly for those people who've just got their machines. What do you like to stitch at? So my setting here is 11 and 150. If I am stitching myself, I would normally go 250. I like to stitch a little faster than that. So I mean, I pause. What it does is just puts in some extra stitches. Pause, pause, pause. You see, it keeps stitching. I'm literally just making this up, just to kind of... There we go. So that's... 250 and 150 because it's it's moving but much slower when I pause so that's the difference between 150 and 250 when we're doing um, ruler work we would have it's set to cruise or continuous, and we would set it down to 50. And the reason being is that if you have it set to 50, the needle just slightly comes out the work, and it means that you're not pushing against the fabric with the needle. So we'll cover that separately. But now let's compare that to precision. Um, I've set it so that the needle stays in the down position, 11 stitches per inch. Everything else is the same. So here we go. When I press start, nothing really happens. If I move my set, the frame, I'm leaning against the frame slightly, it might slightly move, but otherwise it doesn't until I move it. Now this is, this is good where some people like to have that level of control, or perhaps the technique that they're doing would lend itself to that. It's very precise. That's exactly as it says. But some people find this a little confusing. As a beginner, if I've now just stopped, the danger is I don't press the stop button. Like I forget, it's part way through a stitch, but look what happens if I get my hand close to it, it's still moving. I'm not moving the handlebars, I'm just touching the machine. So that is not great. So I'm gonna press the stop button, the needle goes down into the work. So our recommendation is to have it on cruise or continuous 
because that way you won't forget because it's still stitching. I think for, particularly for new customers that's quite important because it's much safer. Yep, there we go. And also it has an auto cut off. So if I just leave it, it's going to turn itself off. Not only does it remind me it's still stitching, but it'll turn itself off. So that is our preferred setting. 11 stitches per inch, nine or 12. I mean, nine to 12 is fine, depends on the thread you're using. But the key thing is being cruise or continuous C mode and 150 to 250, depending on your speed of quilting. So there's a couple of responses to your question about what speeds people are actually using. Right. And um, Carol Watson is says that she uses between 150 and 200 for, for free motion work. Yes. And between 50 and 75 for ruler work. Yes. Good. Now, Jackie at Great. the Stumpy Quilter. Yes. 250 for free motion, but she's a very fast You've got to be a speed demon if you're Jackie. Jackie is a speed demon. Yeah. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> That's great. Yes. I, I mean, I, th I think you're right. You know, if you're, if you tend to be on the faster side of quilting, then 250 is going to be, um, right. Because if we take those two customers, those two lovely customers, Carol and Jackie. So Carol has the moment a Moxie seem to be upgrading to an XL and Jackie's got an Amara. So the Amara is a faster machine. So it kind of makes sense that Jackie can go faster. The stitches per minute, regardless of the machine, is the same. So 250 is 250 on this Moxie or it's 250 on Amara. So the fact that, that you know, Jackie's quilting that bit faster, the machine is 2,500 stitches per minute machine. So it makes sense that she actually has a faster cruise or continuous speed. So just find, find it where you don't feel like you're under pressure. What you don't want to have is a speed where you kind of think, I can't think fast enough. That machine is stitching away and I just haven't caught up with it. So that's, that's the important thing there. Okay, well, thank you for your input, ladies. And um, I appreciate that. So let's just look at manual. When would we use manual mode? So in our little book, we talk about using manual mode for micro quilting. I'm just reading it in case it's any different to what I'm about to say. Start at 30% increase the speed. Yeah. So we have um, machines that have stitches per minute on most of the modern machines. The new machines are the ones that we're currently selling. The ones that are older might have a percentage of the speed of the machine. So you can work out what that is. All right, so if you've got an Avanti, it might be an 1800 stitches per minute machine, but it could be 2000, I can't remember what the old Avantis were, they're 1800 or 2300, something like that. Sorry, say again. How I'm much sorry. was an Avanti speed? Can you remember? The Avanti, second model. 2200, 2200, the latest model. So same as this. Same as the Moxie. Yeah, same as the Moxie XL. Okay, so, but the, the point is, is the Avanti had a percentage it has for crews instead of a number of stitches per minute. So you might just need to work out what that is for your machine. Um, in our book, we say basically three to 5%. <clears throat> so let's just look at manual. In manual, you when you press the start button, it's gonna start whatever we've got in our box in the center of the screen here. So you don't wanna to start too fast. You don't wanna go pew, pedal to the metal unless you're absolutely ready for it. Um, I would start low and use my handlebars to increase the speed so that I can get into whatever motif I'm doing. As I said, it's useful for micro quilting. The other thing that's useful for micro quilting is a saddle stool. Take the weight off your feet. So this is one of the saddle stools that we've got. Yeah, there we go. Now the nice thing about a saddle stool is that it puts us at an angle where we can see what we're stitching. We might want to put a different foot on as well for micro quilting. We might want to put on the micro foot or the open toe foot. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's what you can do. So just to demonstrate with micro quilting, you can basically increase your speed. So that's running at uh, 775 stitches per minute, which is about a third of the machine maximum speed. And it's very good for doing the sort of free motion work that Liz is doing here. I'm just mindful of my arm. 
And it just feels nice and consistent, you know? The thing about micro and pebbling is you kind of get more into it the more you do it. But don't forget to blink. There we go. Yeah, that feels pretty comfortable to me. Oh, here's a tip. <clears throat> um, yeah, for doing micro quilting as well, you would tend to work in the first third, just maybe a half of the machine frame. So you're not having to reach. Also, I mean, we've got fixed arms on the Moxie and the Moxie XL, but with the Amara, we've actually got handlebars that drop down and we would drop those handlebars so that we've got our hands closer to the work. We've got a micro quilting handlebar set for the old Avanti. So if people have got an old Avanti, they can also use that. The other thing I would say is that if you're doing circles, thing to do is do a line of half circles and then you're not going around twice. So that's quite a useful thing to be able to do. These are the kind of things that we do in our Rudis and Fills class as well. We, we do lots and lots of examples of fills and then you'll stitch them out. Okay. Any, any thoughts on that? Any questions on that? Let me know. If I was doing a, not micro quilting now, but maybe there's a design that I feel really, really comfortable with and I just need to get it quilted. Or I'm doing some art quilt, I'm quilt work. I'm maybe doing some surface design work where I'm thread painting. Manual is a great um, function to be in. And in that case, I might go a bit faster. that enables Liz to do a fill pattern like that that looks great once yeah. you've practiced so that you've got that design firmly in your head. Yeah. Well, oh, can I just take the opportunity just to mention uh, something here, something that I see quite regularly online that is a bit of false information. There's plenty of that around on the internet. Um, often people may have stitching issues and I see that the advice is go slower and then it'll be fine. That should never be necessary. Um, if the machine is properly timed, if the machine is capable of doing 2,200 stitches per minute, it is capable of doing 2,200 stitches per minute. And when I've serviced a machine, I usually test it at maximum speed. We do. If it's properly timed, it will stitch irrespective of the speed. So the speed at which you're moving the machine does not affect the stitch quality. Okay. In, in almost any situation. Do you mean the way that the stitch is formed or the way the thread interacts with the, everything? I just mean in just, terms of if people if have it's done, skit stitches, for example. Yeah, yeah. With handy quarter machines with um, industrial needles, mm -hmm. the speed at which you're moving the machine will not affect yeah. the way in which the stitch is I, formed. I agree with you, Pete, because it's, that's, not, that's not the thing that's going to make the difference. The thread delivery system, as long as it's delivering thread correctly, and as long as your bobbin is wound consistently, those are the things, and maybe a burr on, this, on the needle or a problem with the timing, those are the, th the, other, those are the things that are going to cause the problem. And um, as Pete said, not the speed. There, there are all sorts of reasons yeah. why you might get skip stitches or Absolutely. other stitching issues. Yeah. I'm just saying that the one that I see most frequently suggested online... Is people slow, say slow down. People say slow down. Wow, okay. I hadn't seen that. And yeah, that is, that's not... 
That's not correct. Not for handy quilter machines. Not for handy certainly. quilter machines. No. I don't, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. It may be the case for other machines that. Yeah, are that's not interesting. Okay, um, so that's that. Right, let me pick up on a few other things in yeah, here, Liz. I'll First of all, there's quite a few people, yeah, have a sip of your tea whilst I'm chatting okay, again. Good. Quite a few people liking your newly designed panels. Hey, yeah. And good. asking whether or not that they will be available for sale anyway. Yeah, I, in fact, it was something that I spoke to Pete about that, um, you know, this is something that we might be able to, to do. So, what we'll do is after this Facebook Live, just to get a view of what people feel, we'll put the, I can know what the price will be. We'll put up the price and, you know, if you think you would be interested, I can get some more, I can get some more printed. I mean, yeah. we can do them on demand, so it's fine. Well, we'll I think we'll certainly yeah. get more in anyway for we those will. people coming on the class because they might well want to buy them on the day. Yeah, absolutely. But if there's greater demand, we can yeah. put them online generally. Yeah. I mean, clearly we're getting these digitally printed. It's not the most cost effective way of no. doing it because the volumes are quite low. Yeah. But actually, I think that it might be something that people are interested in. It's a great option yeah. for practicing. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's, it's something that we'd been talking about doing for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And Carolyn had come up with that, some of the design. We kind of refined it. And um, yeah, I, I think it's worked really well. The lovely thing about using uh, Corel Draw to do these things, I can just drop different colors in um, accordingly. So I quite enjoyed doing it. And thank you also to, um, you may be familiar with Rosemary Muntus, who's um, a long arm quilter. She's got um, one of the sit down, uh, the faff long arms made by Handy Quilter. And Rosemary and um, Vendulka Bate won the joint um, prize at Festival of Quilts for one of uh, the quilts that Rosemary designed using Corel Draw, and it was also printed on fabric. So it's an interesting technique, and I'm certainly going to do a bit more of it. And if it means that I can use it for things like our classes, then that's great, um, because it means that we've got all of those shapes ready for you to fill. And I think it, it's it's a quite case that if it looks nicer, you feel better about it, you want to make a good job of it. And I think it will, it'll be interesting to see what the feedback's like from the first classes anyway. And I'm looking forward to having a play and doing my fills on those when I've got a few minutes in between everything else. I think I'll send one to you, Carolyn, okay? You can, you can do one for us for the class. Um, that would be great. And I'm gonna do one as well. We'll see how different they are. Okay. Another That's a good question, question, unrelated yep. question. Okay. Um, will we be doing any Pro Stitcher Light workshops this year? Um, yeah, quite possibly. I've I've got some thoughts on that. Um, we'll let you know in due course. I I can't say specifically at the moment, but yes, it is in my intention to do so. Um, you'll I've seen possibly have seen from our uh, Facebook post that we are in the process of uh, recruiting. Uh, we're recruiting a service engineer and installer. Um, and we hope to have somebody in place um, as soon as possible, really. So if you know anybody um, that is interested in doing that job, then that would be great. Um, we've got some applicants at the moment, haven't we, Pete? And we we're have. just um, assessing, um, assessing that. So um, we hope that we can, um, that we find a suitable candidate. It involves, as Pete said before, you know, it's a mixture of sort of the knowledge, the technical skills, and obviously, um, going into our customers' homes to do installations and stuff like that. So it's really important that we pick the right person um, that we feel comfortable represents Pinel Quilting. Um, but the other um, thing that will also free up Pete and my time, which as you can imagine is, is pretty full on, uh, it's always been full on, but it seems particularly full on this year because of the number of orders we've had. Um, the other thing is that we're looking for a marketing and demonstrator. Um, so this is something that we will post up on our Facebook page in due course when we finalize the, the, the description of the job. But if you, this is what it is basically. Marketing is, I do most of the, the marketing. We have somebody who does our Instagram, but we, um, that involves like MailChimp, it involves doing um, the sort of designs in Corel Draw and Canva, um, taking the marketing literature, putting together the brochures like we have for Festival of Quilts, doing Google Analytics, Google AdWords, um, and putting the website together. So we have three websites now, so putting the websites together, um, and we will be developing more on that side as well in 2024. So there's quite a lot, Facebook, Instagram, um, we don't really use Twitter anymore, X as it's called. Um, but you know, that's, that's a kind of traditional, I say traditional, 
a new traditional marketing role. So it will be somebody who can do all of those things plus demonstrating machines and that's going to be an important part of the job as well as customer service so interacting with our customers taking phone calls um, and discussing things with them regarding their orders so a growing role it's a you know we are expanding um, that's you know we're going to be adding two people um, this year um, there are just three of us full-time at the moment and uh, so it's going to considerable changes at Pin or Quilting, and we're really excited about some of the things that we've got in plan this year. What it will mean is that for things like the training and stuff like that, I will be able to spend more time um, on those things which I love, um, love doing. So, you know, this is why we want to hire those people. So, if you know somebody that might be suitable for that, perhaps you're local to Pershaw. We will, do need someone local. It will be based here. Yeah, it will be based here. Yeah, that's the important thing to say. And it is mostly in-house. I need someone that can help me with videoing and stuff like that. They might even be able to edit, edit photos and do edit and editing a video. We'll certainly train them how to do that, even if they don't have those skills to begin with. It's a fun, I tell you what, I'd love that job. <laughs> I would love that job. Uh, seriously, it's a good can I do that job? job. If you, so it's, it's for somebody who's into their sewing or stitching or crafting, yeah. who's very personable and who knows about some marketing, business marketing as well, yes, be great. it would be. We can train them up on the rest. Yeah, absolutely. So, exciting times ahead in 2024 for Pinot Quilting. Let me look at my list, my list of things. So, 17th, let me talk about, right, we finished on the, I think we finished on the demos, haven't we? So we, we did the, the demo here on stitch regulation, manual, precision, and cruise. Haven't covered ruler work, but I think there's enough there to say, you know, for your standard stitching, that's what it is. For ruler work, 50 to 75 um, on your cruise. I won't demo it. Now, the other thing is that aside from our workshops for customers who've already purchased their handy quilter machines, we have the Try Before You Buy on the 17th of February. And the exciting thing about that is, I mean, we've already got quite a number of people coming, but there are some more places if you want to come. We have got space because we can actually take quite a lot of people here um, for a day. So if you're interested in purchasing a long arm machine, come along, try before you buy. It's 10 pounds for the day, which you get back refunded if you purchase any glide thread or anything else like that. And it includes your lunch as well. How good is that? Personal daily lunch. So the nice thing about it is it's four hours in total includes a little break for lunch we just we need to make sure that we've got plenty of energy but we're going to go through machines frames loading how you can quilt from the front techniques for that quilting from the back what that means how you move on you know lots of the things that you might not know about that help you perhaps help you hopefully help you and inform your decision now that decision is a big decision. As our Scottish customers would say, and I will do a little Scottish accent here, it's a considered purchase. And it is a considered purchase because a long arm is, first of all, it's got to go somewhere. Most people don't have space for a long arm without making a few changes to their internal movement of like, you know, boxes, cupboards, bookshelves and all the rest of it. Perhaps it'll go in a loft space and you still, you know, you need to line the loft or it's got to go in a garage, you need to get the, the dry lining done or it goes in a shed and you've got to get the shed. So there's sometimes quite a considerable amount of time between looking at long arms and deciding on the final purchase. But if you know what you want to get before you spec out that shed, then that's an advantage. So on the 17th of February, we will be having uh, four hours where you can do all these things and We've had a bit of a sort out, haven't we, Pete? We've had a little bit of a sort out. <laughs> so tell us about that. Yes, on the on that day, we will be launching lots of pre-loved and ex-demo machines. So in addition to the option of buying new machines, we will have some very well-priced um, with good warranty machines for yeah. sale, pre-loved or ex-demo. And we need to have a clear out. We, we need to make some space for some of these other plans that we have. Yes. That's right. And the nice thing is that those customers who come on the 17th of February will have the first dibs at those um, machines. And then we'll be putting them on our, we'll probably put them on our pre-loved. We will put them on pre-loved longarms.co.uk, yes. which is where we list our 
yeah. pre-loved machines. Absolutely. There'll be some lovely options there. So, you know, if you're in the market for a long arm, it's a great time to be buying a long arm. And uh, we hope we can offer, tempt you with some of our lovely machines that have been used, lightly used in our showroom environment. Um, some of them were taken to Festival of Quilts and used it there, and they've been in boxes ever since. So, and that's, yeah, so, you know, great options. Come along, 17th of February, you can book online on our handyquilter.co.uk website. Now, anything else, Peter? You found You've got the list. Regulation, try before you buy, lots of extremo. Got it. We've done it. We're there. No more questions, no more answers. Good. We are there. Can I go home now? Yes. Oh, yes. She said yes. <laughs> Didn't expect that. <laughs> we got one car. I'm coming with you. <laughs> so for those of you who've been watching The Traitors on TV, tonight is the final episode. Oh, it's been a great series. It's this. been so good, hasn't it? So we've, we've loved the um, Traitors Uncovered afterwards as well. And for those of you super fans out there, might might have really enjoyed it just a little bit there's the podcast and it's got extra bits after traitors uncovered with ed what's his name ed gamble it's a really good series and if you've been watching it like we have glued to the tv as we watch the shenanigans of harry and co um then um yeah you'll have enjoyed it hopefully as much as we have and we're looking forward to seeing who wins who wins the money and claudia's great Love Claudia. Love to meet Claudia. She looks like a really fun person. Right, that's it for today. We're going to say goodbye. We're going to finish a few things off here and then we're going to be heading, our ho heading home. I'm going to be hopping on the machine when I get home. I don't know whether I told you that. Yeah, well, I'm going to be hopping on the machine and doing some more stitching on Debbie's quilt. Sounds like I'm cooking again. <laughs> He's a great cook. Happy quilting, everybody. Have a lovely weekend. <laughs>